Hi everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with you today showing you how to do a cool set of earrings that was actually designed by one of the members of our beading and jewelry making Facebook group. This was designed by Renee Wilson and a lot of you asked for a tutorial for it. I'm calling it the aviary. Uh, set of earrings they kind of looked like eyes of a bird or reminded me of birds so that's what we're going to be working with today and it features the diamond duos as well as the mini duos for this earring here I have one made and then I'll make one with you as well if you're not a member of our beading and jewelry making group on Facebook you can ask for membership and get ideas like this and then possibly we kind of make videos off of that as well if people request them so again this is a Renee Wilson design from our group it features those diamond duos and the mini duos and then some seed beads as well if you need any of these materials to make the earrings or it would look nice as a pendant we'll do a little drop down here on the left hand side with links for all the different materials that are used as far as beads that are used, it features the Diamond Duo bead and the Mini Duo bead, which is the Mini Duo is a smaller version of the Super Duo. The Diamond Duo, if you're unfamiliar with it, is a two-hold diamond-shaped bead that one side, the way that they create and press the glass, looks like it's faceted and the other side is flat. It's also featuring some 15 O's and some 8 O's seed beads. For the earrings, per earring, so double these numbers, you're going to use 10 of one color of your 8 seed beads, 9 of another color of your 8 seed beads, one color of your mini duos, you use 8, and I should have said for mine, I'm using for my 8 seed bead that I'm using 10, I'm using the matte metallic dark bronze. For the number that I need 9 of, I'm using the crystal magic copper. For the number that I need eight of in the mini duo, it's the Jet Bronze mini duo. You need seven diamond duos. I have three in the bronze color and three in the pumpkin color. So, or I'm sorry, four in the bronze, three in the pumpkin, adding up to seven. And then the last bead that we use is six beads of our other color of our mini duo. And this is the uh, white Picasso that I'm using. So I'm going to be using all those colors together, and then I have a collection here. I didn't go through and count, but you're using a bunch of the 15 OC beads just to kind of line up the sides as well as decorate the middle a little bit. In addition to these 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6 groupings of beads, you are going to use a wire protector and an ear wire per earring. So you want to go ahead and double that number to make the design. You could also use all the same color of diamond duos, and in that case, you would just need seven total per earring. I'm stringing the whole earring on some wildfire beading thread. I'm using the green color in point zero zero six. You're gonna use about two and a half feet per earring. I have my thread zap two handy, so that way I can go in and actually uh, cut down the cording off the roll, as well as burn off the thread ends when we get to the back of the earring. I am working on a bead on it board here that's gonna help to stop the beads from rolling and makes it really easy for me to pick up the beads when I'm working with my size 10 beading needle. And this is the Pony brand beading needle. Other than that, if you'd like, you can have some super new glue handy. Because they're earrings and they're not getting a ton of attention actually on the earring portion, I didn't bother to glue my first earring. I just tied it in a nice square knot. To get started, we're gonna cut our thread and actually thread our needle. And I have everything already laid out here, ready to go. Just to show, because I know some of you struggle with threading the needle here, once I burn the thread off the actual spool of thread, I take a pair of pliers and I actually flatten out that little portion that was balled up by the thread being um, severed by the heat. Once I do that and flatten it out, it makes it much easier to actually thread the eye of the needle because you have a much flatter surface that you can go in then and actually put through the eye of the needle. Once you have your needle threaded, you're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get ready to pick up and work with our first of our diamond duo beads. 
And in the middle, it really kind of doesn't matter which color you start with, but if you have the correct amount of beads, you're gonna know that whatever you start with in the center is gonna be used second in the bottom portion. To start, I am going to put on a 15-0 to be a stop bead. A stop bead is just gonna hold the beads on the thread and prevent them from falling off as we're working on them. I'm gonna put the bead on and string my needle through two times, which is gonna expose thread twice on the outside of the bead, and this bead eventually will come off. I'm only leaving about two inches at the end of that tail, so that way I can grab on and tie off my thread ends in the back of the project. To start, I'm gonna pick up that pumpkin pie bead, and I'm gonna string my, th my needle through on the left-hand side so that the diamond portion is facing up and the flat side is facing down. Coming out of that bead, I'm adding three of my magic copper 8-0s and stringing down the diamond duo. So my thread is coming out the same as the starter side. Pushing that stop bead kind of towards the back of the project and tucking the thread behind my finger so it doesn't get twisted up, pick up three more of your 8-0 seed beads in that green color or that copper color. Stringing back through the diamond duo, this is going to put three beads at the top and bottom of the diamond duo. You can see my needle exited one of the 8 seed beads just because of the way it was lining up, but I'm gonna take my needle through all three of the first eights that I put on. When I'm to the side of the diamond duo, we pick up three of our matte metallic bronze and sew through the three magic copper that were put on second. I'm not sewing through the diamond duo at all. I'm just sewing through the seed beads. When I get to the side here, I'm gonna fill in this gap around the corners of the diamond duo by adding three more of the, mat the matte bronze. And sew through the first 8-0 seed bead that was put on the project in that magic copper. So I'm coming out the top of my diamond duo right there out of the first magic copper bead. When I'm out the first magic copper, I add two of the jet bronze mini duos and sew through the magic copper at the top. Those two seed beads will sit in a V, or those two mini duos will sit in a V right there at the top. Again, two mini duos go on in the same color and I sew through the third magic copper bead from that first grouping of three that I put on. When you pull tight, you wanna make sure that they're not twisted and that you don't have a lot of thread exposed and that they're sitting in a nice angle. So we now have two of our mini duos on between each of our copper beads, so four beads all together. When I'm coming out that copper bead, I'm gonna sew through the first bean next in line of the uh, bronze color. And when I'm coming up out on the side there out of that first bronze bead, go ahead and pick up three of the mini duos in the al alternate color. Skip over the middle bronze bead and go to the third bronze bead. At the same time, if you want, you can sew through the first of the copper, magic copper beads that's at the bottom of the diamond duo. Those three beads then are gonna sit on the side and I'm ready to mimic it and add the four beads, the four of the bronze color mini duos to the bottom. So it's gonna repeat the same thing that we did at the top, adding two bronze, sewing through the middle copper and adding my last two of my mini duos in the bronze. Sew through the sixth and final magic copper and out the next matte bronze bead on the side. Make sure those mini duos are sitting correctly 
and cooperating, sitting in a V. When I'm out the side here, I go ahead and add the last three mini duos that I have on my board. And these are that Picasso color. Skipping over the middle eight and coming out the third eight on the side. You can see now that's the base of the top here that we're working on that we have created. To add my next row of my beads, which is going to be some 80 beads here on the side, I'm going to sew through that first magic copper 80 as well as through that first mini duo. When I'm through that first mini duo, my thread is coming out towards the middle of the top of my project. I'm going to go from that first hole of the mini duo and step up so I'm coming out the second hole of the mini duo with my thread reversing in direction. You're going to see a little bit of green thread there on the side of that bronze mini duo. Once I'm out the side here, I'm going to pick up a 15 0 and sew to the empty hole of the next mini duo, which is going to be that Picasso color. When I'm out the mini duo, pick up a bronze colored seed bead. You can see I'm turning the project in my hand as I'm working with it, so that way I'm always feeling comfortable and kind of sewing away from me. I pick up another eight to fill in that empty space and sew through the next mini duo. So it's going to have the two mini duos sitting on the sides of those three, or those three mini duos with those eight sitting on the sides rather. Next, I'm going to repeat by picking up a 15 0 and sewing into that bronze bead right there. And I'm catching the second holes of all of these beads. When I'm coming out the bottom, I get to go ahead and add my first layer of my mini or of my diamond duos. So when you're picking up the diamond duos, you want to make sure that they are facing so that that facet, that cut look, is facing up the same direction as your initial diamond duo in the middle. I'm going to pick up the first diamond duo after coming out of the bronze mini duo and add it on. So through the next bronze mini duo, I'm going to add on the next diamond duo. Add on the last of that bronze diamond duo and sew through that fourth mini duo in the jet bronze. Once you have those three on, you want to give a nice tight pull to make sure that there's no thread that's coming out that jet bronze at a 15 to mimic the opposite side and sew through the second hole of the mini duo in that Picasso color on the opposite side. When you're out the Picasso beads, that's when you add your 8-0s in the matte bronze color. We're going to add one, sew through a mini, and add another. After you're coming out the last of the Picasso beads, you add a 15, just like the first side, and sew through the jet bronze at the top of the project. When you're through the jet bronze at the top, here's where you're going to use three of your magic copper color seed bead just to brighten up the top a little bit. Adding a copper and sewing through right in a line the second hole of all of these jet bronze beads. When you get to the starter side where you used your initial 15 0, you're going to sew through the jet bronze as well as the 15 0 seed bead and let your needle come out after the 15 0 seed bead before the Picasso mini duo. Sitting this down then you can see the design starting to take shape and as we come around we're going to be decorating the edges with the 15 0's as well as zigzagging along the bottom to create our seed beads on the side and make those diamond duos almost look like they're bezel set in gold. When you're on the side here coming out the 15 0 
you're going to pick up three of your 15 OC beads and sew into the matte bronze seed bead. Add three more seed beads, which are going to sit right over the middle mini duo on the side and sew through the next 8 0. After the 8 0, add three more seed beads and get your needle in between and go through that 15 0 as well as the mini duo. That's going to decorate the initial side with those 15 O's to make that look bezel set on the side. Next I'm going to take my thread and needle, go through the diamond duos and the mini duos, all just repeating through the same last hole of the mini duos and first hole of the diamond duos. When I get to the opposite side, just retracing my thread, I'm going to let my thread come out of the last diamond duo. Add five of your 15 O seed beads and sew from the top hole of the diamond duo to the bottom hole of that same diamond duo, which is going to change the thread direction and decorate the side of that diamond duo. The next layer of diamond duos that we're putting on, almost in this peyote style, is the pumpkin. Coming out of the diamond duo on the right, I'm going to add another diamond duo onto my needle, making sure that faceted side is sitting up, and sew through the bottom hole of the diamond duo in the middle. Pick up the next pumpkin colored one, making sure that facet sits at the top and sew through to the very outside edge of the diamond duos. At this point, I want to add that decoration of five seed beads and I'm going to sew through the top of the diamond duo as well as the mini duo and coming out after the middle diamond duo in the project. I'm going to reverse my thread when I'm coming out that middle diamond duo. And we're going to take the thread, which you're going to see just a tiny little bit, from the first hole of the middle diamond duo down to the second hole of the middle diamond duo, reversing the thread and also through the pumpkin bead on the left with my needle going towards the left. As I pull slowly, you can see that thread is going to be exposed just the tiniest of bits right there in the middle. Again, I'm going to pick up five seed beads and sew from the upper hole of that pumpkin colored bead to the bottom hole of the pumpkin, decorating the side with five more seed beads just like we did at the top. When I get to the middle bottom here, add your last diamond duo and sew through the diamond duo in the pumpkin color on the right. When I'm exiting there, five more seed beads get put on to decorate the side. And I'm going towards the middle, going through the pumpkin color diamond duo, as well as the bottom hole of the bronze. That same bronze bead, I'm gonna take my thread and come out through the pumpkin bead and have the thread out the top of the left hand pumpkin bead. Sew down through the exterior seed beads, that little trim that you did. And also through the bottom pumpkin beads and the top of that last bronze hole. Once you're on the side of the bronze here, it's time to, add, to use your beads to decorate the very bottom of that bottom diamond duo. I'm going to add four seed beads. So from the top of the bronze with your thread coming out on the right hand side, 
to the bottom of the bronze with the thread coming out to the left. Grab three seed beads and circle your thread around that bronze bead going coming out of the left and circling around through the right and back to the left. That's going to create a loop and push those seed beads down to the bottom. When you're out here, go ahead and add your four 15 O's, just like we did on the other side, and grab into that first hole of that bottom duo. At this point, the bottom portion is completely finished, and we're going to go back and finish off the top. To get back to the top, I'm going to sew through the pumpkin diamond duo, through those five 15 O's, through the top hole of the pumpkin duo, as well as through the bottom hole of the middle first row of my brass diamond duo. This is a bead that the thread was exposed on the left hand side of the bead. We're also going to expose it on the right hand side a little bit, sewing from the bottom hole of that middle bead to the top hole, going, coming out to the left and going towards the right. At the same time as I sew through this bead, if you can, you'll want to try to sew through the mini duo, the next diamond duo, the mini duo, and come out the 15-0 seed bead. If your thread happens to go to the back, you want to kind of push it towards the front like that. I'm going to sew through that diamond duo. Again, through that mini duo and out the 15. When I'm out the 15 OC bean, I'm going to mimic the sides by adding some more 15 OC beads, three at a time. Three gold go on. And through my bronze, three more go on to go right on the side and through the bronze. Three more seed beads go on. So through the 15 O right there at the base, as well as the mini duo and bring your thread out. To decorate and add the clasp on the top, we sew through that mini duo and through the 8 O seed bead. When I'm coming out the 8 O seed bead, oh, sorry about that, back through the mini duo and the seed bead. When you're coming out the 15 there, we add three more seed beads and then through the 8 -0. When you're at the top here, we're going to add two seed beads and then we're going to pick up our wire protector. The wire protector or the wire guard has a little U-channel. We're going to sew up through that little tube portion, bringing the needle through. Make sure your thread is in that U-channel, so down the opposite side. And I just hold it there, almost pinching to make sure that that thread does go inside to that channel. Push it down a little bit and add two more seed beads. And sew through the 8-0 on the opposite side. So it just sits right above that middle 8-0. Coming around, coming out that left hand side of the 8, I add three more seed beads and sew into the 15.
The last thing I do is I'm going to add those 15 O's in the middle. I thought it helped to brighten it up and to hide a little bit of thread. To get back to add those, I'm going to snake back through the project going through that mini duo that's next in line. Sew through the mini duo so that I'm going from the outermost hole to the inner hole of the mini duo as well as through that side 8 o bead. When I'm through the 8 o seed bead, I'm going to go through the 8 o's in my copper color as well, all the way around, all three. And I'm going to go through then, after adding my 15, through the diamond duo. Coming out the diamond duo, I add a 15, and I pick up the copper beads that are along the base row, sewing through all three of those. So the 15s just kind of sit on top, coming out the copper bead again, I add on a 15, and I sew through the diamond duo. When I'm out the diamond duo at the top, I add on another 15, and I sew through my fifth or my magic copper eight. At this point, the earrings are actually complete, and you have that fun design with that color kind of sticking out in the middle. And it's really kind of a out of my comfort zone colors, but I really like the colors that they became. And I'm going to go in and actually get ready to tie off and add a knot to the back to take off that stop bead. To get back to that stop bead, I'm going to take my thread and needle and continue after coming out the first copper bead there to go around and come out the copper beads on the side, go through my bronze beads, and this is all through the 8 O's that are right along the middle. Continue over to the copper beads, so through those one more time. And after the third copper bead, I'm going to push the needle out so that way it comes out to the back of the project. Right there at the back of the project is exactly where my stop bead is. Sometimes you can take another needle that is on your bead mat and you can kind of force this 15 up a little bit or even slide it off. Because my thread ends are now right next to one another, all we have to do to end is simply tie a knot. To tie the knot, I do right over left and left over right, creating a square knot and holding the project really in. Because this is to the back and you don't see it at all, I'll go ahead and do a third knot and then pick up my thread burners. Picking up the thread burner, I'm going to burn the thread ends down, cutting off the extra thread and then going in right over top of them and kind of balling them up behind the project making sure not to burn completely through them. I have both earrings completed now, and I'm gonna go and grab my ear wires. Taking a pliers, I open up the ear wire, slide on the wire protector, which gives it such a great look for seed beaded earrings, and then close up that earring. Again, on the other one here, Slide open the ear wire, put on the earring, and slide that closed. At this point you are finished. Once you make one and then make your other one, you're finished with these aviary earrings. Again, they were a great design by uh, one of our members of our beading and jewelry making group on Facebook, Renee Wilson, so thanks a lot for the design. And everybody keep talking, have the designs keep coming. Let us know if there's things that you'd like to see and interact with us there. If you do need any of the materials for this, you can go back to the start of the video 
where we have the little drop down for the different materials that were used. Also, underneath the video, there's always a little description. Underneath that description, there's a show more button that you can click on and it'll give you links to purchase the products as well. If you want to get regular updates on our YouTube videos, you can also subscribe to our channel as well as check out PotomacBeads.com to find out where our locations are, to gather materials, take some classes, meet our wonderful staff, and see what we're working on. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and have fun making these awesome little springtime earrings. Thank you.